championship games of the NFL. He was a mistake. I've never seen our bench so intense as they were yesterday. And calling on that defense and calling on that offense, their minds and hearts were in that ball game. That's the ones right. on the field and off the field. Because we knew that there was a lot of mistakes. And Syracuse came to play. That's exactly right. But also, I think that's why we, we knew we wouldn't get beat because we were pulling like that. First that's right. Thing. Fourth and one. Pit at the Syracuse 37. Big play call. Yes, it was. Very fine job of time music. This is the outside there. Bobby Hutton, uh, he didn't get the ball. He makes a good block there. And Tom uses good judgment getting the first down. Buddy. Tommy Usyk for the first down. And we'll watch Pitt with the first and 10 at the 33-yard line. Anthony Dorsett does what he does oh so well. Let's just take that football, get outside, and do the rest on his own. This is six points coming up. Not really on his own. He gets some good blocking downfield. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take another look at it here. The Panthers now trailing 13 to 10. Take the lead 17 13. Bill, watch our bench here. It's Tony Brakes, Lance Grimm. Watch the coaches, watch the players. Well, I'll tell you what, it was an air of excitement. You look there, watch them all come to the feet. Right now. Watch them. There they go. <laughs> that was a happy group. Sure was. And the Hawk does a little thing in the end zone here with the football. Those games are no fun while they happen, but they're really exciting to talk about once they're over. But they're great for the fans. That's, uh, that ball game lasted, I thought, too long almost. I thought they got daylight saving time mixed up yesterday. <laughs> After three quarters of play, the Panthers have a lead now 17-13. The Panthers with a third and 14 at the Syracuse 40. Tommy Yusick with the football. Pitt has done a remarkable Fine job. job scrambling. Yes, yeah, he is. I pointed out at the luncheon, and I really hope it ends up to be true, he could be one of the few un uh, undefeated quarterbacks in the history of football. Well, we hope so. It was a fine job of Carson Long. 47 yards and a key play. Carson has never kicked better. I mean, you know, his three field goals were the difference in that ball game. There were other factors always. You don't win the one play or one play, but his three field goals were awfully important. We'll take a look at a big interception here. Second and one at the pit 22 Syracuse ball. Jim Kramer again. What is the coverage here and what, what is happening defensively? Uh, I'm not sure of the coverage, but uh, uh, Bob Jerry cut right in front of the man. We try to set up a wall for him on that. We usually return on an interception to the near sideline, but he couldn't get to it. So in other words, as soon as you see the ball grabbed, you immediately go for your right. wall position. Right. That was a situation where our defense was alert because I believe that was a second and one foot, wasn't it, Bobby? Yes, it was. Second and a short one, yes. Second and one, and they were going for the big play feeling like they could come back on third and short or fourth and short and make it. So that was alert play by Bob Jury. Third and one. Asleep. Third and one at the pit 11-yard line. Big play. Sessler, the big fullback with a full house backfield and two tight ends. Bill, probably at this stage, because every game's a big one, this is probably the two biggest plays in the four years we've been at Pitt. A tight situation. Uh, whatever you call here could be wrong if they make it. It could be right if it did. So we made a good call. Bobby Roper and Arnie Weather and I were talking. And Bobby and Arnie used, uh, made a good decision, I'll tell you that. Fourth and a couple of inches, and I think you heard the play call, right? Right. Jim they uh, called an audible at the line. The play before the fourth down play was the exact same play. And we heard, we recognized the audible. And Joe Stone or Al called it out, and Al direction that and we knew it was coming you see our point and jake Parrish jumped over the line of the blocker and makes the play he did not make it in my opinion of course uh, maloney may think he did according to whose side you're on but i don't think he made it frank maloney slapped here for 15 yards on sportsmanlike conduct for coming onto the field to protest the marking of the football and the panthers take over at their own 25 first and 10 and tony dorsett goes to work good There's blocking four yards good blocking is fine running with tony Dorsett. what else can you say about him he's the greatest runner in football history Probably the best running college in, in, in football period, in my opinion. On his second carry, 28 yards. Tony gets a little tired right here, but still, number 33 gets called in the huddle from the Syracuse 43, and he almost breaks it all the way one more time. On three straight carries, Dorsett picks up 65 yards. And of course, he finished the day with 241 yards, and it didn't hurt him as far as his Heisman Trophy uh, efforts are concerned. Good effort downfield blocking. Great running, but Tony. He did a fine job adjusting and keeping his feet to stay in bounds. Look at Jim Corbett, a tight end from Erie, McDowell, throwing 25, 30 yards down the field. They know that the Hawk has a chance to score when he gets the ball, and they're going to give a second effort to block him. Carson Long's 29-yard field goal, his third of the afternoon, is good. The Panthers lead 23 to 13. Time expires, and Pitt remains undefeated in the 1976 football season. We'll return here with defensive coordinator Bobby Roper. Offensive guard Tom Brazoza and linebacker Jim Kramer right after these messages on the Johnny Major Show.